Hello and welcome to a new video on my channel. News in the world of Sang Online. As you might know or have already heard, Shanti, our community manager, has made another question answer format where I answered the community's question. So without further ado, let's start right with the video. So first of all, I want to start with definite answers that we got. So, and most definite answers are probably the things that are not gonna come. First thing there is the level cap. Levels will remain at level 100. There will be no further level expansion to 300 or other rumors were not true. Levels gonna stay at level 100. It's also the reason why I am destroying my XP scrolls right now. Goodbye. <laughs> Next thing is regarding cubes. We got a cube stack size of 99 right now. It's the maximum stack size that you can get. And that's not gonna be increased because cubes are seen as consumables. So they are thought not to be stacked up like this <laughs> for a certain event like Smuggler event or even any event to have the premium potions. But they're rather meant to be opened right away. So when you drop some, that you instantly open those cubes. Next off, we got the jewel chests, which are currently not stackable. You can only stack them down to one, but then they're not restackable up to two again. Um, no plans to make them stackable for now. The next question is regarding the platforms. Will Dragonstone Online be on mobile? And to be honest, I would think that would that would be kind of funny to see Dragonstone Mobile, but I think this game has other priorities than bringing it other platforms. We got the Steam release um, and still the Steam client still has some minor issues and before those aren't fixed why should you think about another platform. Mac OS of course would be nice for Mac users but bringing it to a whole other platform would take up so much resources that are needed to improve the game to fix bugs. So I can understand why they say not it's not planned or it's not gonna come. Next of a question about the jesters, which were a possibility to gamble your resources back in the days. Will they return? No plans as of now. That sounds like a no to me. Although there's a lot of RNG and luck based things in the game right now, like lucky bags, there are no plans to get back the jesters right now. Next thing is if there's gonna come new languages to the game and that's also a no. Then a question about boss raids, which we know from other games where you can get in a bigger group than five, for example, 10 or 20 players and go to a boss that's really hard and raid them or kill it all together. And there are no plans now, but it's a, they say it's a cool idea, but of course there's probably other issues than, than that because yeah, you would ha need to rework the group overlay remove the cap of five, although I would like the idea to have bigger groups, but yeah, I, I can understand that it's not in the plans right now. Next question is regarding game-breaking jewels, like for example, the jewel of gem fortune or the jewel of focus. For me also the jewel of the ingredient hunter would be really nice to make it kind of more obtainable, for example, with some kind of guaranteed way to get it. For example, you can get the virtual focus only once a year in the solar event from the progress bar. But I can understand that the jewel of gem fortune is such an important tool that people might want it, might want to get it not only not only by RNG, but also have a possibility to get it in somehow a guaranteed way. But there are no plans for that. Although I hope that in the future they might make some kind of ways to get the most important jewels somehow in a guaranteed way. Next thing is regarding mythical items. If there was a question if they could be easier, if they could be made easier to obtain, and the answer there is a no that mythical items should be hard to obtain. But I understand the question rather for the big game hunt mythical rather than the dragon mythical because the dragon mythical is kind of obtainable in a guaranteed way and is not so hard to obtain like the big game hunt event 
set because the Gipi Game Hunt event set affords needs a lot of grind, but it's not guaranteed that even if you grind very much to get that set. So in my opinion, that set should not be a lucky drop, but rather like the Dragon set in somewhat in some way farmable. For example, you need to do 30 runs in the Blazing Inferno, which is a lot to get the crafting ingredients to be able to craft it. Though they said in the answer that Pikim Hunt will come every two or three months, but still I would say even if it's coming all two or three months, um, it's still, it still should not be so RNG based in my opinion. Also there was a question regarding if tanks will receive some love and uh, the answer kind of surprised me because the answer was rather um, based on the mythic set for tanking rather than some law for tanks and in my opinion we have possibilities to tank with our immovable wall skill in our skill tree but no one uses it because it's useless right now because there's no need for tanks in any map but if there would come new mechanics new difficulties where you would need a tank for example also bosses that you need to taunt and that are not immune to being taunted like mortis for example then tanks would might or might at least see a comeback and also if tanks would be better in supporting for example if a tank could break all resistances then a supporter build for a tank would be really nice because right now it's really hard to really break resistances as a dragon knight because you only have 30 percent on your iron brow and yeah depending on how much you skill the certain mastery um, a little bit on outburst, but you can't break it fully. You can maximum break it 68% with two skills, which is not enough for a supporter build, in my opinion. Next question is about the smuggler event, and it will definitely see a comeback. Now that we've talked about the clear answers, let's talk about the priorities or the or things that they want to do, but things that are not as defined yet as the answers that they had to the previous questions. The most important thing that they're talking about here is the latency issues and especially the long loadings. That is named as their top priority and they, they are trying to prevent this as much, it as much as possible. And this is good that they understand that they have to fix the most essential problems of the game first before releasing new content or going on new platforms. Next off we got the question regarding official live streams from Dragon Sang. We noticed back when we noticed from a few years ago there were always official live stream with also a small event bar where you could obtain some community coins and also by watching you got some infos from the official team and some bonus codes sometimes and other stuff and it was also always really nice. And I hope to see Shanti streaming soon. Although he he said that there are some that there are some issues that need to resolve first. And I bet I think that's not because of technical issues, because if then Shanti hit me up if you need help. Um other than that. I think it's because Big Point is, an, is a company and as a company you always have to do certain legal steps and stuff like that first. On top of that, there was the question about the content creator program, which is still being worked on currently. And I hope really to be part of that program because I hope that with a content creator program, content creators are empowered to even do better content. And yeah, I mean, the you guys as the community will profit from this if we content creators are able to do more and cooler content so i really hope that that's gonna come to life and that we will see the youtube and twitch and other and all all those communities come together and do nice guides and stuff for the community the next question was regarding rune dust which you can by the way farm really nicely in this map Make sure to check out my video about this map. Um, and the question is if Rune Dust might be useful again, because many people are already stacked up to the max cap. I'm also almost there yet. And if you have max runes, your Rune Dust is kind of useless right now. 
Na, next off, let's talk about endgame content. They are planning to release such content in the endgame, but more will be will also be announced about this. And I really hope they have some cool ideas to make the endgame more viable again, with more maps that are worth to farm, and not only running the same maps for progress. And also, they are planning to rework parallel world uniques and regional sets, which is really good in my opinion, because many sets are just useless. For example, I just dropped some parts of the regional set here, and I mean, look at the set bonus, that's kind of useless, of course. And also some uniques, like Gladiator, for example, is not played, except if you drop it as first unique on level 145, for example, then you might play it as one of your first items, but it will really quickly replace it with other uniques. So I hope that this will make also some cues that we don't farm except in the PvE season, that it makes them more attractive once again. For example, Q3 or maybe also Q7 or Q8, so that we might see a revive there in those queues. And now a question that many people want to know, especially those people that don't have the Dragon set, when is Dragon coming? Also, when will there be Defeat the Undefeatables event? Dragon will come early this year, probably in March, but it's not sure yet, so that's gonna be announced as well when Dragon will come exactly. And Defeat the Undefeatables is not yet decided because if you remember the last Defeat the Undefeatables event, the loading screens could take up over one minute or even two minutes. So before the loading screen issue is not fixed, they won't bring out Defeat the Undefeatables, in, I think. So we're gonna wait. So we're gonna have to wait for the fix of the loading screens, and after that, they might they might talk about Defeat the Undefeatables coming back. Then there was the question about plans to increase the affection of equipment bases. Because right now, for, for example, base values of armor and resistance are quite low. If you compare it to the other stats, and also if you compare it to how much you can increase your stats with your with your gems, so that's something that could be thought about to rebalance the to rebalance how gems and base stats affect your stats. More changes with the content expansion, so the content expansion is not final yet, and it will be still expanded. So kind of. I'm kind of hyped to see those changes and how they affect the end game and also the game in general. Another thing that many people have asked themselves is the Fallen Star. What is this? Why do we not have a boss for this yet? And that's meant to be for the cube set, because you can obtain a set from the cubes. Maybe I'm lucky and I'm drawing an item real quick. Let's check. Yeah, this here, for example, which gives you a lot of crit, but it's simply not enough crit and also you only get it on one level 100. This set could help new players a lot, because in the beginning you always lack crit, so... I hope to see a nice rework of this set, this cube set, with the cube rework, so... Kind of excited for this one as well. Next off we got the question about difficulties that encourage group play and there are plans just like for the big amount event to get harder mechanics and fights back in the game which also rework includes the rework of those items and sets yeah but we'll still have to wait for the reworks there and for more details regarding that next off we got a topic that i'm also really interested in about the PvP reworks, modes and maps, and there's a PvP rework planned featuring a new PvP mode and a whole revamp of the skill tree, which is planned to happen this year. I also heard that the Helios event should come back with this, I hope, really hope so, and I hope that they will bring also the PvE season as well as the PvP season, which is the Helios event basically, more regularly, so that you've got them almost always some some kind of PvE or PV, PvE event lasting one or two months. And also there are plans to rework the skill tree for all classes. So I'm 
really interested in that one if they want to go for a simpler approach or simply go for some rebalancings here because in my opinion the idea with the masteries is really nice but if you have those masteries please make it viable for all classes so give all classes a chance to have a good build with each mastery so it makes sense i would rather love to see small changes that work and that rebalance the current skill tree than then changing everything at once and it might not work as intended or the, or it will be still unbalanced um, so but we'll have to wait for that as well the next topic i want to talk about is the server merge which is finally and i'm really really excited about it is that it's finally being discussed and looked into it i know that this was always a no some years ago but this is a big topic especially for players from smaller servers that are struggling to find groups but also for players from bigger servers that want to play with friends from other servers and i'm really excited the future holds for the topic of the server merge there are there were many other topics covered in the Q&A, like for example, faster ways of smelting gems, like daily quest reworks, specific maps that are new, a new class, etc. If you want me to make another video, which is also more in this more talk format, let me know in the comments. And also let me know how you like this new format, because it's the first time that it's like rather where I'm just talking and um, yeah, also talking about my opinion a little bit a little bit so let me know how you like that and other than that i would say have a good day and see you in the next video bye bye